Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Power Hungry Podcast. I'm Robert Bryce. This is a special podcast uh, that uh, I'm doing. Uh, I'm calling it a power brief to talk about the announcement that was made on Tuesday by the Department of Justice uh, regarding uh, its prosecution of Next Era Energy for the violations of the Migratory, Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Uh, in fact, multiple violations. Um, you can see here the bald, the bald eagle on the left and the, uh, and the golden eagle on the right. Um, uh, to me, this uh, the, this is one of the most remarkable cases of uh, uh, enforcement of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act that I've ever seen. And I've been reporting on the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act since 1990. I published my first article on this in the in the Christian Science Monitor in 1990 about the oil and gas industry, which was being then being prosecuted for multiple violations of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and the Golden and Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act. But this this press release that was put out on April 5th, Tuesday, today's April 7th, is truly remarkable. The headline is ESI Energy Whole LLC, wholly owned subsidiary of Next Era Energy Resources, is sentenced after pleading guilty to killing and wounding eagles in its wind energy operations in violation of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. What, what's remarkable about this is that the wind industry now for years, in fact, for more than a decade, has been saying, oh, we're really concerned about wildlife. Well, this press release decimates that claim. It eviscerates that claim, and it does so against Next Era Energy, uh, a company that is the largest renewable energy producer in the world. And this, this, uh, this document, the, the, the DOJ's press release, is remarkable. It says ES, ESI, which is a subsidiary of Next Era, acknowledged at least 150 bald and golden eagles have died in total since 2012 across 50 of its 154 wind energy facilities. So that number has to be too, is far too low. It represents only likely a fraction of the number of eagles that have actually been killed because, of course, not all the eagles that are killed are found. And second, this is only a third of Next Era's facilities. It further says 136 of those deaths have been affirmatively determined to be attributable to the eagle being struck by a wind turbine blade. But here are the other parts. It says, and, and the fact that the DOJ and the Fish and Wildlife Service would prosecute Next Era Energy when, when the wind energy business has been getting a free pass on these issues, on these uh, federal laws, some of our oldest wildlife protection laws in America, the, wild, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act was passed in 1918. Their, their, their conduct had to be particularly egregious for the DOJ to bring this case. And in fact, it has been, it, their, 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 their activity, their, their conduct was particularly egregious. In fact, it was outrageous. Here's what the DOJ says. Uh, this agreement holds ESI and affiliates accountable for years of unwillingness to work cooperatively with the service and their blatant disregard of wildlife laws. Blatant disregard from one of the biggest utilities in America. How is this permissible? How are, why, where is the Sierra Club? Why, why, why aren't the env so-called environmental groups speaking up on this? Why? Because they're fully in the pocket of this renewable energy craze. It says that, in fact, that um, ESI's conduct violated both the Eagle Act, the Eagle, Bald Eagle and Golden Eagle Protection Act, and the MBTA, but the government accepted the company's guilty plea to only MBTA counts due in large part to ESI's agreement to apply for permits at 50 facilities. So what's the bottom line here in terms of cost? Uh, Next Era ESI has to pay about $8 million in fines and restitution, and it has to pay up to $27 million for an Eagle uh, 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 program to uh, r increase Eagle habitat and do some other things. But it says here, I mean, the other parts of this are just truly remarkable. And remember, this is the Department of Justice in an, agent, in a, in an administration that is fully in favor of renewable energy. But it says here, ESI and its affiliates, Next Era, deliberately elected not to apply for, uh, for or obtain any, any eagle take permits uh, intended to ensure the preservation of bald and golden eagles. In ESI and its affiliates began commercial operations at new facilities on a schedule intended to meet, among other things, power purchase agreement commitments and qualifying deadlines for particular tax credit rates for renewable energy. In other words, they're saying that ESI, in fact, and I'll talk about this in a minute, Next Era knew that it was rushing these projects into, into operation because, and they did so because they wanted to get more federal tax credits. They were subsidy mining and they didn't care about eagle deaths. Here's what the, this is again, the Department of Justice saying this. 
ESI and its affiliates, NextEra, received hundreds of millions of dollars in federal tax credits for generating electricity from wind power at facilities that it operated, knowing that multiple eagles would be killed and wounded without legal authorization and without, in most instances, paying restitution or compensatory mitigation. And then it goes on to detail the efforts the Fish and Wildlife Service, and I wrote about the F Division of Law Enforcement with the Fish and Wildlife Service back in 1990 in the Christian Science Monitor, 32 years ago, that it says in, in, in March of 2019, Fish and Wildlife Service informed the defendant through a letter to its agents that based on con uh, that their project Cedar Springs 1 and 2 in Wyoming would, could result in the collision mortality of 44 golden eagles and 23 bald eagles over the first five years of operations said that if built, that the, co the company should obtain an Eagle Take permit. The defendant continued the development of the Cedar, Rings, Cedar Springs facilities. In July of 2019, the, com the, um, the, the company and its uh, consultants met with Fish and Wildlife Service uh, representatives and, and during that meeting uh, recommended that consistent with the recommendations made by the Fish and Wildlife Service earlier that year, the wind project not, should not be constructed due to the risk of avian fatalities. The defendant did not implement the, the or, 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 and also recommended that if the wind project was built, the project should implement seasonal curtailment during daylight hours. The defendant did not implement the recommended curtailment. So here they're directly violating suggestions from the Fish and Wildlife Service. Then again, between September 10 and, two, and September 23, Fish and Wildlife Service sent additional letters to the defense agents, each noting that the defendant's parent company, NextEra Energy, had documented the project was anticipated to kill eagles and recommended that the facilities apply for an eagle take permit. Fish and Wildlife Service reiterated for the third time its recommendation that a wind project should not be constructed in the proposed area for the Cedar Springs project. And yet the company went ahead and did that. I mean, this is a repeated example over and over by the Department of Justice saying that one of the biggest utilities in America deliberately violated federal law. As a bird watcher, as a citizen, it just is it's completely outrageous what, the, what, is, what is being reported here by the Department of Justice. What else and why else is this matter now? Well, because the wind energy is, of course, seeking an extension of the production tax credit, the, 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 which I mentioned before is with the tax credit, the subsidy the wind industry business gets uh, for operating wind farms. And that the wind energy business has been rejected now 325 times across the United States from Maine to Hawaii uh, by local communities saying they don't want wind in their areas. And NextEra has, in fact, sued some of these counties and, and, and local municipalities to force them to take wind turbines. So I'll just conclude with this. What if this were ExxonMobil or Chevron? What if the oil and gas industry were doing this? The, the, the outrage from the NGOs and the environmental groups would be, would be clear. This would be front page news in the New York Times. But because it's the wind business, we have a double standard. And I take no pleasure in saying that, saying that but the, the media, the, they're, you know, they're, they're reporting on, the, on what happened and the fines. But they're not reporting the backstory and the context for this, which is that the, in, the wind industry has known for more than a decade that the more turbines they build, the more eagles they will kill. And that's what has happened. And now the Department of Justice, thank you, Department of Justice, for enforcing the law. But uh, it, this is just an outrageous example of the, the, the uh, lack of corporate responsibility, lack of ethics in the wind energy business when it comes to our, uh, our wildlife. And as a bird watcher, as a taxpayer, as a citizen of this country, one who it loves golden eagles, bald eagles, it's great that they're bringing this enforcement action, but their own press release, the Department of Justice's own press release, shows how irresponsible this wind industry has been when it comes to protecting our wildlife. So, yeah, I'm mad about it, and I know I shouldn't get too worked up about it, but this is my business, and I, I, I'm offended and glad to see the prosecution, But um, and I've written a piece about this, but I wanted to get this power brief out before uh, before I get that piece published. So thanks for tuning in. There'll be more of these coming. Thanks.